This is the current world number one's team, right? He's been first for the last two weeks, and in game week 20, he was seventh, right? And he's been in the top 1K for about five weeks. But his team looks like this, and I don't think it's far away from what many of your teams might be. It's certainly not that far away from what my team is. So, hey, maybe there's hope for us all. This is what my team is looking like, headed into double game week 23, and we'll take a look at transfers etc because I've got two free transfers to use I need to look at Man City players and Arsenal players so we'll be diving deep into who's the best Man City and Arsenal player to buy this week and this is what my points are looking like from game week 22 pre Manchester United and Leeds fixture 54 points plus Perisic to come off the bench with five points that leaves me with 59 I've also got hopefully Dalo to play as well as Rashford captain. I'm relatively happy with how the week's gone. I mean, we've got the Kane goal. Rashford, although I didn't triple captain him because my rank's like 1 million, even captaincy points are good. Still got my triple captaincy left. Might bang it on Haaland this week or maybe even one of the Arsenal boys. Who knows? I say who knows. I'm going to have to know soon. Kepa with his 10 points. Great. Apart from that, not much elsewhere. I was hoping to get Mason Mount points but it's probably curtains for him this week now. Now, I don't necessarily think this week is a bad week to bench boost for a lot of people. I mean, there's a lot of good fixtures, right? I mean, Tottenham are playing Leicester. Fulham are playing Nottingham Forest at home. I've got Mitrovic and Andreas Pereira. I would obviously have to get rid of Doherty, though, if I wanted to bench boost, obviously, and I don't think that's an, a priority transfer this week when I've only got two Arsenal and I've only got to Manchester City, right? I, do I really want to buy a Manchester City defender? Maybe. Maybe I'll buy Aki or Kanji. If I do, potentially I could bench boost, but then I'd be relying on, like, Foden playing, and he's like, what has happened to Foden, by the way? He's disappeared for the past month or two months. Absolutely fuming with Foden. So bench boost is on the cards, triple captain is on the cards. Let's dive into the numbers for Manchester City and Arsenal because the two free transfers that I've got this week will most certainly go on one player from each team. Now if we bring up the Premier League table here on FB Ref and we look at defences, right? So if we look at team data and who's got the best defence in terms of non-penalty expected goals conceded, Manchester City and Arsenal are the two best teams in the league, right? Apologies if it's a bit small for you to see on the screen there, but 0.74 non-penalty expected goals conceded per 90 minutes for Man City and 0.81 for Arsenal. Now, interestingly, Newcastle are right on the toes of Arsenal here with 0.82, but then there's a big jump to West Ham at 1 and then Brighton 1.01 and Manchester United 1.15. So it's not crazy, I don't think, to buy a defender from one of these teams because they're the type of player that you will want going forward. So with that in mind, let's have a look at some of the numbers for the defenders in these teams. So here I've highlighted the Man City defenders and I've ordered them by minutes played in the Premier League. So we've got Akanji at the top with 1286 minutes played, then Cancelo, who's obviously gone, then Stones and then Ake, right? Now obviously we know Stones is out for a period. I don't know what the period is. Obviously keep an eye on that if you're looking at bringing Stones in. I would just wouldn't bring him in right now. And then you've got Diaz, Walker, Lewis, who's 3.9 million, Laporte, and then Sergio Gomez. Now I've read on Twitter somewhere that Sergio Gomez is probably going to get shipped out in the summer. So I wouldn't be expecting him to play at left back. I'd expect it to be... Ake or Lewis, who played the previous game against Tottenham in that position. I think Akanji and Ake are the safest picks from the Man City defence, but you've just got to be worried because you've got Diaz and Laporte, who are fit, who traditionally over the past few years have been the first choice centre-backs. So it is a real worrying one, I think, to pick defenders from Man City when there's such quality defenders from Man City on the bench who could come on at any point and get a run in the team because the results haven't been there for Manchester City. So you wouldn't blame Pep Guardiola for changing it up in defence, right? And if we sort the defenders by non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes, we see that Rico Lewis does actually outperform all the others, 0.16, but the numbers aren't really anything to shout home about. 0.14 for Stone, 0.12 for Cancelo, for example. But what I have noticed, and you've probably noticed it as well, is that Defenders from Manchester City do rack up a lot of bonus points, especially centre-backs and obviously Cancelo when he was in the team because of the amount of passes, etc. that they play and stuff as a team, right? So if I were to pick a Manchester City defender right now, I'd probably pick Akanji 
but I wouldn't be expecting like huge massive returns, especially going forward, but I'd probably be expecting some clean sheets to start happening soon because as we saw with the data that we looked at, they do have the best defense in the league. That being said, with obviously João Cancelo having gone now, do we see the likes of Rico Lewis playing a lot more? I think the jury is out for me anyway, and I don't want to jump into Rico Lewis just yet. I mean, I'm thinking out loud really, because I wouldn't mind it. 3.9 million for a Manchester City defender, who's going to start at least one of the double game week games, right? Might start to... Um, yeah, the more I speak about it out loud, the more I don't fancy it, right? You want to get one of those defenders, centre-backs who are going to play both games. You want those 12 points potentially for the two clean sheets. It's not going to happen, is it? But you know what I mean. Okay, so let's look at the Arsenal defence now. And I'll sort them by minutes as well. A key thing to realise here when listening to my opinions on this is that I have already got one. I've already got Gabriel. We can see he's got the highest minutes there. Next, obviously, you've got Ramsdale and Saliba. Then you've got Ben White and then you've got Zinchenko. And I don't mind Zinchenko as a pick, but you have got Tierney in the background, who's a very good left back as well. Um, minutes wise, Zinchenko hasn't played every single game. Far from it. And when you look at the numbers, this is why I picked Gabriel because he has a significant goal threat 0 0.15, which is all pure XG in terms of non penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes, right? 0 0.15, all XG. Whereas Zinchenko has got 0.12 altogether, 0.07 of that is XG, and 0.05 is XA, if that makes sense. So if I didn't have one, I'd still pick Gabriel this week, maybe Zinchenko, but that would be a bit of a risk. So let's look at attackers from both of those teams. I've sorted Arsenal here by non-penalty expected goal involvement per 90 minutes and highlighted the players who I'd expect to play, right? You've got Enketia, then Odegaard, then Saka, then Martinelli, and just below that, Xhaka. 0 0.76, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 3, and 0 0.5, and 0 0.31. I already own Martinelli. I think I want to add a Saka to that. I'm pretty certain of that. In fact, I don't think there's a way that I don't bring Saka in for Mount this week, right? I'd imagine if we sort by minutes, he'll be the third most played player in the Arsenal team. Okay, fourth behind the two centre-backs and Aaron Ramsdale. Just below that is Xhaka, which is interesting. So is that 0 0.31 non-penalty expected goal involvement figure could sway some, I'm sure, because Zach, Xhaka, let's not forget, is very cheap in Fantasy Premier League. I think Nketiah is a great pick. You can see his numbers here are monstrous. I would be worried or at least thinking and researching a lot about when Jesus is coming back and factoring in when am I going to play my wild card, right? So if you're playing your wild card in a couple of weeks and Jesus is back in a couple of weeks, that would have me more inclined to jump on Enketia now because it's not so much of a risk that I need to hold on to him for a long period of time, if that makes sense. And Odegaard is great. Odegaard is fantastic. I might just buy Saka and Odegaard, but I'll probably buy, like I said, one Arsenal and one Man City player. So here I've highlighted the Man City attackers and sorted those by non-penalty expected goal involvement. Obviously, Haaland at the top. Everyone's got him, not a problem. Then we've got De Bruyne and Mahrez, 0.71 and 0.65. Here lies the problem. De Bruyne is probably too expensive for me to get this week unless I somehow like sell Kane, maybe Kane to Inketia and then mount to De Bruyne, something like that. But I want Saka. It's not going to be a way I go, I don't think. And I've highlighted the rest but because you just don't know who's going to play. Mares, Grealish, Foden, Gundogan, Alvarez, Bernardo Silva, Lewis. I don't know if I would touch any of those players, to be honest with you, because you just don't know. Maybe that has made my mind up for me that I'm going to go for a defender. For Man City, how boring is that? Okay, so this is what it would look like if I did these moves now on my team. Doherty would come out for Akanji and Mason Mount would come out for Saka. I really like this as a plan. The only real worry with this team then would be having Foden still, who's just um, <laughs> managing to escape every single week. I mean, it's a double game. I can't sell Foden ahead of a double game week when there's a chance he's going to play, right? Selling him for Mares just doesn't appeal to me. It's not the way that I play the game. It's just selling one risky player for another player who I think is ultimately risky as well. Now, captaincy is going to be on Erling Haaland without a doubt. It could be a triple captaincy, but it could also be a bench boost being played this week. You can see the fixtures are really, really tempting. Double game week for Haaland, Mitrovic against Nottingham Forest, Kane against Leicester, Andreas against Nottingham Forest at home, Rashford against Leeds. No, sorry, that's Leicester, isn't it? They're playing Leeds tomorrow night at the time of recording. Foden, double game week. 
in inverted commas. Saka, double game week. Martinelli, double game week. Perisic against Leicester, teasing so many points in that Tottenham game that I, I wouldn't mind playing him on the bench boost against Leicester. Kanji, double game week. Trippier, we know all about Trippier. Dallo should be back, right? I'm hoping he's going to play this Leeds game tomorrow. Gabriel, double game week. Kepa, West Ham and Ward is probably the only one who I'd be worried about against Tottenham at home. So it could be a bench boost week. I think it's either going to be bench boost or triple captain. Let me know in the comments below which one you would choose. Thanks for watching. Speak you soon. Speak you soon. See you soon.